Hey, welcome back. My name is Stevie and I'm the health curator. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, thank you so much. In today's episode, we are gonna be turning inward. There is so much of your healing that has to do with putting in the action and taking action and going to the gym and going to the grocery store and meal prepping. But the biggest parts of your healing and the healing that we're gonna be discussing today is all that comes from within. So let's turn within today. If you're not in a place where you can become vulnerable, I suggest pushing pause and saving this video because we're gonna get real and we're gonna get raw and it's gonna take some bravery to allow yourself to be honest. If you're ready, to start your healing, let's turn our eyes inward. So we live in a world where we are told to put on a brave face. We're told, let's not feel our emotions, let's keep them in. Men especially go through this and it's all about, you know, this, this facade of being a man. Women go through this as well, especially because there is a certain stereotype of women being too emotional or too sensitive. We deal with this illusion and have adopted some of it. And because of this, we kind of turn into blocks of ice. We, we get really separate and we get really individualized where we're like, this is us and this is myself. I'm on my own little private island where I kind of have to keep myself guarded from everybody. What ends up happening though is that we forget who we are. Walls don't just keep out other people. Walls don't just keep out, you know, hurt and pain. They keep out our higher vibrations. They keep out our dreams, our love, our joy, our bliss. I definitely have noticed that throughout my health journey, throughout my healing journey, I've had to face the walls that I created. Walls and armies of, of mind, to be quite honest. Armies of thoughts that would deploy upon situations and start trying to figure out how to keep me safe, how to keep me. This created a lot of isolation. I really, really felt alone. Probably since I was a child, I'm an only child. I was adopted into a family. If you listen to my podcast, The Healthy You Podcast, uh, the first episode I told my story. In that story, I told you of the trauma of losing my sister. We were full sisters adopted into the same family. And on her third birthday, she suffocated and it was just me there. From a very early age, I had a sense of isolation, of aloneness that I carried with me and wore like armor because if I was alone, I was gonna, I was gonna be alone. And it wasn't as premeditated as that sounds. It was more of, I kept people at a distance because I didn't believe that showing up as who I am would behoove me. I, did, I, did, I think that I, I kind of felt like if I was who I was, I would show up and people would laugh and I would be even more alone. What ended up happening is all throughout high school, all throughout middle school, I would go away like at lunchtime when people are hanging out and you know being together, I would go and be on my own. And in high school, I would go to the music hall and I would and go into the auditorium and play the piano for the entire lunch period or any of my breaks, any time just to keep myself away from other people and retreat within, which was, I, I had a great time. I love playing music. I, I love spending time alone. But at the same time, I had this sense of nobody liked me, nobody cared about me but I also didn't give them a chance. I didn't show up because I felt like people had thoughts about me. I don't even know if people, what, what people thought of me. It doesn't really matter because what I thought of me ran the show. That's what we're here to talk about today. How you are thinking of yourself, how you are wording things around yourself is keeping you from your healing. I've been getting so many messages asking for advice and help and I give advice and uh, take stock of their situation. Um, almost always I get messages back saying, thank you so much, I'm going to try this. I'm really trying to lose weight. I'm really trying to get healthy. I'm going to try to go to the gym this week. The intention there is so, so pure. I understand that. And I also want you to start to check yourself. Give yourself a little check. What does the word try mean? What does the word try tell the brain, which is a computer? It tells you that yes, indeed you are gonna try. But if you say, I am gonna run a marathon, 
I, I'm running a marathon. I am a London marathon runner, which is what I put in my start today journal. Now I put that in my journal before I even started running. I'd never run in my life. I hated running. I didn't even know how I was gonna make that possible because literally cardio seemed like the worst thing in the world. But I kept telling myself, I am this, this is who I am. I never used the word try. I never used the word, I'm going to try to change my life. I'm changing my life. I'm healing myself. I'm putting myself first. These are things that you can adapt and that you are saying somewhere, but there's a part of you that wants to kind of isolate. There's a part of you that's used to people, used to isolating from others say, and when you be your full self saying, I am losing weight, I am healing my body, I am changing my life, part of you gets smaller. So you say, I try, I'm gonna try. I don't think that you're trying to weasel yourself out of this, but in a, in a couple weeks you will because that word try already gave you permission because it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna do it, you're gonna try to do it. It's time to unshrink yourself. It's time to allow yourself to come into the totality of who you are. It's time to slow down and get quiet, turn off your phone, turn off the TV. Right now I'm sitting in the basement. There's only the lights and you and me. So let's get real. Let's stop pretending that we're somebody else. I couldn't show up like this if I kept wearing the mask that I used to wear. Go ahead and go watch some of the first videos I ever made. But we wear masks. We don't mean to. And then we wonder why we're not connecting with other people. Why are we so alone? When we keep ourselves from the world, we keep ourselves from the world. If you are staying at home, and you are watching Netflix, you are playing video games, you are oversleeping, you're eating to numb, you are going to hang out with people who you don't really like and may be encouraging you to do behaviors that aren't you because you feel lucky that just somebody out there is gonna be around you, or at least it's somebody, at least I'm socializing. Take a second and look in. Are you being who you are, or are you trying to be who you are? I tried to be Stevie for a long time. I tried to be the Stevie that my mom wanted. Never was very good at being the Stevie my dad wanted, but I very much tried to fit the mold that I thought would make my mom proud. I don't know why you're doing what you're doing. I don't know why you're shrinking yourself small, but I can tell you this. You cannot heal wrapped up in a cocoon where no one can find you. You can only heal once you start stepping into who you are. Now look, this is not easy. And you may be sitting here looking, saying like, whoa, I found your content because you lost weight that's what I'm into. If you're, if you're trying to lose weight and you're not willing to heal what's in, inside, it's not going to make a damn difference. And, I'm, and that's real. Let's be real and really clear here. If you do not heal the mind, the heart, whatever happens in the body is going to still reflect that sickness. So you may lose weight, but you will still be sick. I'm not about that. I'm not about you losing weight. I'm about you healing because when you heal, the people around you will start to heal or they'll fall away. When you heal, your healing is going to shine a beacon for other people and you're gonna be like, wait, I could be happy and healthy and full of bliss, joy, living a life of purpose? Yes, you're gonna have to do the damn work though. You're gonna have to do the work. You're gonna have to show up. You're gonna have to go and, 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 and choose to make the moments where you feel invisible, make yourself visible to you. Stop focusing on what they're doing to you. 
it's okay to notice it and to like let that propel movement because that's what emotion's for. It's to get you to take action. And once you take that action, take your power back. I don't let myself feel invisible because I heal that little girl who was hiding, who wouldn't let herself cut her hair, who wouldn't let herself be kind of a tomboy, who wouldn't let herself do these things because she thought it made her, her less of who she ought to be. I don't care who you ought to be. I care who you are. And I have a sneaking suspicion that you've forgotten who you are because you've been wearing a mask and you've been shrinking inside your isolation castle. It's time to melt the walls. I believe in you. I believe that healing who you are and stepping into who you are fully, that transformation is a rebirth. It's a rebirth that will take you to the next level. Everything that you've been doing has brought you here. So if you are here and you're saying, hey, I'm unhappy, and then you leave this video and you don't apply anything that I've talked about, you don't let anything sink into your heart and start to change who you are. You're gonna still be in your isolation. You're gonna still feel alone. You're gonna still feel invisible. If this is not being applied, then it's worthless. So please apply it. And if you're like, hey, look, I really want to, but I'm not sure what to do next, message me on Instagram. Message me on Instagram, message me in the comments, whatever you need to do to get some direction. But I think you probably already know. If you need me to reflect that, reflect that back to you, I will. It's time to unshrink yourself. It's time to come out of hiding. It's time to be brave and it's time to heal. When we heal ourselves, we will heal the world. We can't look at the world and say, okay, well, it's nuts, so I'm just gonna give up. But isn't that sort of what we've done? Cause we don't wanna end up like our parents and we can barely afford to survive. All we can do right now is start to heal within. Start to feel your emotions. Ask yourself, have I ever felt this before? If so, why? When? When was the first time? When was the first time that I felt anger because I felt invisible? Is that justified? Probably not. Probably from something you couldn't control when you were a child. But no one can go back in time and take that away. Your only chance for living your dream is to step up and be the hero that little child needed. Take her hand. Walk her out of her ice palace. Walk her out of her hiding place and let her transform. Let her have a rebirth. I believe in you. I hope this was inspirational. I hope this was motivational. But more than that, I hope you take action. If you want to hang out with me more, I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. Um, and I'm on the Healthy You podcast. All of these things you can find at thehealthyyou.co, my website. I believe in you. It's time for you to believe in you. I will see you next time. And until then, stay curious and be kind.